My name is Dan Pyle, and I live in Palm Springs. This is the view of Palm Springs from the hillside. Palm Springs is a very friendly place. It's well known for golf sport, and it's a quiet place, perfect for drawing. I'm very happy to be here. I was always drawing and doing all sorts of little art projects back then when I was a child. It just was really creative. And I think the first time I was recognized for my art was um, about second or third grade in school. We got an assignment to draw some kind of an insect. And I picked one that had wings and the wings were kind of iridescent, you know, they get. and. I remember trying to get all those colors into the wings somehow. And I guess I did a good job because at some point my teacher came to me and said that there was some kind of a regional school convention or something and they were doing a display of different things to present at the convention and they wanted to put my drawing in the display. I was born in 1954 in Wolf Point, Montana. Now when I tell people I was born in Wolf Point, I usually make the joke that I was raised by wolves, but um, my mom never really appreciated that joke. My German grandparents had a farmhouse about an hour from um, Wolf Point, and um, that's where my mother grew up. I was only in Wolf Point as a baby because eventually we moved to Washington State, and that's where I actually grew up. Um, in Tacoma, Washington and around that area. As a child I liked to draw like all the time, like when I was really young, drawing and coloring, but mostly drawing. I wanted to show you something that was from my childhood, this, this nightstand. The reason I kept this and the reason I'm showing you this is at night when I was four years old, I would get bored, I didn't want to go to sleep, so I would pull out the drawer and get out my pencil and I would just draw lines on the side of the drawer. So who knows, maybe that's how other artists got started too, by drawing on the side of their nightstand. But I just kind of kept it to just remind me where I started. I'm gonna show you some art I did as a child. Uh, I went into some old files and found a, a few pieces. I did this when I was seven years old. I used to copy pictures out of my little storybooks. This is from a book, something about the city mouse visit the country mouse or something like that. Then when I was 10, I did my first Mickey. So this is Mickey in pencil. Uh, Minnie is on the other side. She didn't come out so hot. Her nose is uh, a little out of proportion, but <laughs> you know, I tried. I think this must have been, um, probably was more like 15 or 16, some face studies. These are in pencil. Later in um, probably about ninth grade, I was in a wood shop class and one of our assignments was to draw some tools. I drew a circular saw and uh, did a pretty good job on that. And my teacher came to me afterwards and he said, you know, how would you like to earn some extra credit and do some other drawings for me? So he would take the drawings and he had them put on a transparency. Then he would lay the transparency on a machine which would project it onto a screen. So he was actually using my drawings as a teaching aid for, um, you know, for the other students, which was, you know, I was pretty cool for, for a kid that age and, you know, got extra credit for it to boot. My senior year of high school, I got a job in a movie theater and in the lobby of the theater they had paintings by uh, you know some woman's group or something that were a lot of florals and stuff and they had never sold anything. Um, the manager had seen my art and he says why don't you bring in your paintings and let's hang them up and see what happens. So I brought them in and about a week later he called me and he goes something just bought one of your paintings for $35 you know it's like wow $35 for a high school kid that's you know big money. and. Um, so I was very excited and I took the check to school and I showed one of my teachers and she said she made me a copy of it to keep 
And she says, well, congratulations, you're now a professional artist because you've been paid for your work. So that was, I guess, the beginning of an art career. I had never really thought about making a living as an artist and, you know, it, it was a, for a long time, I, I did never really think that would happen. It wasn't kind of a goal. I just enjoyed doing the art and, I, you know, we'll see where it went. So after I got out of school, out of high school, I moved to Seattle, which is a bigger city, more opportunities. I also started doing some, some wall murals and graphics. So eventually I became known for, for doing some of these graphics and I started getting jobs. Um, I know I did like a waiting room in a dentist's office. I did a, um, an entire floor of, a, of an office building. So it was kind of fun to be doing that on the side. I was still working a regular job as well. Later on, I moved to Los Angeles and I lived around the corner from this really high-end art gallery and I would walk by there all the time and I thought, God, this is just like so nice. I would love to be able to show my work in here someday. And they had this one artist that they showed there that did paintings, but they were very similar to the kind of work that I did. So I thought, well, if they showed that, maybe they would show mine. Finally, I went in one day and I talked to the manager, David, and we became friends over the years and he became my mentor. He just guided me along through the process. Well, over the years, I became friends with all the owners. There were three owners of the gallery and a couple other people that worked there. And they, they all had bought pieces of my art for their, for their homes. Meanwhile, an artist friend of mine was trying to put together a little group show with six artists, and we were going to call it Six Pack. So we had this great show, and a lot of people came, and I sold a couple pieces. And I had this one piece, there was a, one of their wealthy clients that came in, and she really liked it. And he goes, I'm pretty sure she's going to buy that. But then, you know, she didn't, nothing happened. And then one day I got a call, like right after the show, from someone from out of state. And they said, you know, my aunt saw this drawing of yours, and she hasn't stopped talking about it. She just loves that drawing. And she's very wealthy. She's been very good to all of her family over the years and very supportive of all of us. And we never know what to give her as a gift to give back. And we want to chip in and buy this drawing for her. I have been working on a collection of animals this year, and each animal presents a new challenge. Um, the types of fur, the textures of skin. On this particular piece, I am drawing a white polar bear on a white board. So my challenge here is to make him visible so you don't just see you know, two eyes and a nose. So what I have to do is I have to go in and lay in some shadows first. Then I come back with the eraser and I actually draw the hair into the shadows with the eraser. This brings out the depth and the dimension and gives it the texture. So I'm very fortunate to have such good representation in Germany and I love coming there. 
you know, meine Großeltern waren in Deutsch und um, aus, aus Berlin. I know my grandparents would be very proud that I'm showing my work in, in, in Germany and um, it's like I'm revisiting my, my heritage. They were always real supportive of my art when I was little and just starting out. I do drawings, not photos. 